Until the mid-1800s, abortions were legal and available in the United States. In 1847, the newly formed American Medical Association began a campaign to professionalize medicine by outlawing what it called quackery. Included in its ban were midwives and herbalists who had provided abortion and maternity care in their communities for centuries. During the second half of the 19th century, Victorian society began to condemn women seeking abortions as selfish, immoral, and shirking the duty of motherhood. Protestant and Catholic churches joined the medical establishment in expressing their condemnation. Meanwhile, legislation restricting abortion continued to spread, and by the turn of the century, both birth control and abortion were illegal in most states. If a woman needed medical treatment after a botched abortion, even though infected and bleeding, she was often required to testify against her husband or lover and the abortionist before she could receive medical care. I, Maria Hecht, believing I am about to die, make this my anti-mortem statement. I, Cora Alice Grimes, about to die, make this statement. On the second day of July, 1896, James Dunn, a retail merchant, gave me a packet of calomel. I, Renetti Parker, am about to die. I went to visit Dr. Parker. Well into the 20th century, a climate of fear prevailed. This 1913 film, which dramatized an illegal abortion, escaped the censors. It dared to criticize the law at a time when even information about contraception was illegal. One of the most dedicated activists, Bill Baird, had fought restrictions on birth control at the federal level. Over the years, he'd been arrested eight times for staging demonstrations. His victory in the Supreme Court, Baird versus Eisenstadt, legalized contraception for unmarried adults. Sarah Weddington was 26 years old and a recent law school graduate. She was still looking for a job at a legal firm when she decided to challenge the abortion law in Texas. I will never forget the night before oral argument because I was so nervous. Uh, I had done a few uncontested divorces. I had done wills for people with no money, and I had done one adoption. That was the entire sum of my legal experience. But I had spent three years almost getting ready to stand before the U.S. Supreme Court. The issue of abortion had personal meaning for Sarah Weddington. While she was in law school, she and her future husband had gone to Mexico for an abortion. I was in the courtroom. Uh, just before the judges come in, there is a hush. And I had a flashback to that clinic in Mexico and to my feelings about it and then my determination as time went by that no woman should have to go through that and that I would do anything I could to see that that was not necessary. We are not here to advocate abortion. We do not ask this court to rule that abortion is good or desirable in any particular situation. We are here to advocate that the decision as to whether or not a particular woman will continue to carry or will terminate a pregnancy is a decision that should be made by that individual. That in fact, she has a constitutional right to make that decision for herself. We had a revolution in this country of women saying we're not going to do this anymore. We want doctors, we want care, we want wanted and loved children when we want them and however many we want. And uh, it was the first time that women had ever said it was our right, our decision for us to choose. 